Clemson Hotline is on the air, a one-hour talk show giving Clemson fans a power hour of Tiger Sports Talk. Clemson Hotline is presented by y'all.com and brought to you by Amtrak. Clemson Hotline is direct from Tiger Country on a network of radio stations across the great state of South Carolina and a podcast edition of our show is available for download in iTunes. Hello, everyone. Welcome back into the program. I'm your host, Lawton Swan. Thank you for sticking around with us here as we give you an hour of Clemson Sports Talk. We're going to talk about your Clemson Tigers taking it to the wire against the Miami Hurricanes, the number three-ranked Hurricanes who will be moving up in the polls, obviously, after Duke's defeat at the hands of Maryland this weekend. Plus, the Clemson Tiger baseball team comes out and starts the season 2-1 and one against William & Mary, but an ugly game two has fans already saying, what are we going to do offensively this season? And finally, the reason many of you are here and many of you are tuning into the program, Terrell, T-Mac, Boogie, whatever you want to call him, McIntyre will be here with us momentarily in the second segment of the show as we take a look back at his career at Clemson and some of the best Clemson basketball teams anybody remembers over the past, oh, say, 20 or so years at least, maybe 30 if you really want to be fair about it. But we've got a whole lot to get to. Don't go anywhere. I see the chat room is starting to gain some, ga starting to gather some listeners. So stick around for more Clemson Sports Talk right here on the John C. Calhoun Radio Network. Mom, I had the best dream. <laughs> well, good morning to you, too. Okay, so I was at night. I had a sword, and our house was a castle. There was this angry dragon. It was kind of scary. Oh, yeah? But I protected the castle. Oh, that's my brave little man. I'm glad our castle is safe. Your home is your castle, and sometimes you need help defending it. The National Association of Realtors supports maintaining homeowner tax incentives because they make home ownership more affordable for more families. Learn more at houselogic.com. G Dog Gentle Dentistry at Oak Grove is located on Highway 1 near the Barnyard Flea Market. Modern, relaxing dentistry with TVs and headphones in every room, nitrous, and even oral sedation. Digital diagnostic x rays for better quality and 85% less radiation exposure. And check out their new Clemson patient special. Mention that you heard about G-Dog here on the Clemson Sports Talk programs and receive an extra 5% off all services through football season. If you don't have a regular dentist, go see my dentist, Dr. Rick Jackson at G-Dog. That's Gentle Dentistry at Oak Grove. If you depend on prescription opioid painkillers or heroin to get through each day, you may ask yourself, how did I get here? Withdrawal and rehab seem like scary and difficult roads, but there is a different way. I know because I was just like you and I found it at turntohelpnow.com. At turntohelpnow.com, I learned about different ways to get help, including those in a private setting without the need for daily visits. Find your courage and go to turntohelpnow.com today. This is a referral service. Calls will be routed to an independent referral insurance agency. Do you know the number one cause of bankruptcy? No, it's not losing your job or running up credit card debt. It's not even divorce. It's medical costs. If you and your family don't have health insurance, just one serious illness or accident could be financially devastating. But now there's good news, really good news. A health insurance hotline has been established to provide health insurance for all Americans, even uninsured Americans with pre-existing conditions. Now anyone can get health insurance even if you have a pre-existing medical condition. I repeat, now anyone can get health insurance coverage. Call now for a free no-obligation quote on affordable health plans available to you. Again, this is a free hotline for anyone, even if you have pre-existing conditions. Protect you and your family from sudden unexpected medical costs. Call the free health insurance hotline right now at 1-800-838-5562. That's 1-800-838-5562. Call 1-800-838-5562. Want to hear the sound of hassle-free traveling? Amtrak takes the hassle out of traveling to over 500 destinations. You can stretch out in a spacious seat, relax in a sleeping car, and enjoy a hot meal in the dining car. And for those who want to kick back and take in the scenery, go right ahead. For everything you get on Amtrak, the one thing you won't get is this. So whether you're going to a family reunion or an away game, make it a whole lot nicer on Amtrak. Book your trip today at Amtrak.com or call 1-800-USA-RAIL.
A winning team requires having great team members. If you're a landowner interested in selling timber or are considering buying or selling land, call the winning team of Cross Creek Timber and Cross Creek Realty LLC today. Put the knowledge and skills of professional licensed foresters and realtors to work for your team. To learn more about services offered by Cross Creek Timber and Cross Creek Realty LLC, visit www.crosscreektimber.com and easily follow the link to real estate or reach them by phone 864-517-3620 or 864-517-3621. They're playing basketball. We love that basketball. They're playing basketball. We love that basketball. Welcome back into the Clemson Hotline. A lot of ways you can take part with us here in the program each and every week as we are live on the front page of, actually not the front page anymore of ClemsonSportsTalk.com. We've moved it to a little section called the, the live uh, page. I guess it's up at the top. If you look to the top left of the page, you'll see it there. It says live show. You can click that and come on in and join us. Uh, we're also on TigerNet.com, especially on Wednesday nights for TigerNet talk but this of course is the Clemson hotline all those things though can be picked up all the old shows archives old interviews everything can be picked up on ClemsonSportsTalk.com and we're in the process of doing some things on the website right now to finalize some changes that we've made and we've had some uh, new logos and stuff worked up for some shirts we're going to try and put together before especially before football season but hopefully many of you will be able to get some of those your hands on those and some giveaways that we have so that you can sport around our shirts and tell people about our programs and, and let Clemson fans know that we are out here and we're looking for more and more listeners each and every week. We're going to be probably the only sports show that you're going to find anywhere that is strictly just Clemson. We're not going to focus on what's going on everywhere else. It's all about Clemson all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Follow us on Twitter. We're at Clemson Sports. And we start with the Clemson Tiger basketball team. Ah, once again, the tweets came pouring in. I believe it was... Stothammer17 said, here we go again, snatching defeat from the clutches of victory. Yes. In a game that started slow for Clemson, in a game where at the 10.37 break, you only have two points. Ten minutes and 37 seconds, folks, remaining in the first half of the game, you have two points. But you're only down 8-2 to two because defensively you have played well. You start one from 17 from the floor. And you managed to scrap and claw, and somehow, as ugly as it was early, you're only down two, eighteen to sixteen at the half to the number three ranked Miami Hurricanes, who, as we mentioned, will be moving up in the polls after Duke's loss against Maryland. So what would be the number two ranked Miami Hurricanes? I cannot fault at any point in this game the effort, the energy defensively how Clemson got after it, especially early on on the offensive boards. I mean, those, those things kept us in the game single-handedly. Because for everything we lack in scoring outside of a few players, out of, outside of everything we lack in scoring, we make up for it on the defensive end of the floor nine times out of ten. And it really doesn't matter who you're going up against. If you think back to the game in Durham not that long ago, Clemson played great defense early, just couldn't score. Just couldn't do anything to distinguish themselves offensively to get a nice lead. Had that happened against Miami, maybe you're on the other, the other end of this 45-43 loss. Maybe. But that's turned out to be Clemson basketball, and I said it on Twitter. I will probably die of cardiac arrest watching one of these games. But at least I know I have a pulse. This team continues to make you realize that you uh, have a pulse and that you are invested in the program because, for crying out loud, if you don't find yourself on the edge of your seats at the end of these games, you need to get yourself checked out because these guys just, they find a way. They come up a little short, but they find a way. They make it interesting. And like I said, that effort, that energy, that keeps you invested in them and pulling hard pulling hard for him, and I wanted this win. I think all of you did for this team, for these young guys growing up. The way Jordan Roper's been playing as of late. Career-high 19 points by the lefty freshman. 
it, it stings to lose the games the way they're losing them, but you obviously can see that there is a, a, a glimmer of hope down the road, I think, for this team, one that maybe we didn't feel there was not that long ago because of the way you've started to see a Jordan Roper step up and you start thinking about mixing him in with a guy like Devin Coleman next season. K.J. McDaniel still being there. And, and maybe you have a nice core in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Think about this for a minute. Miami had four starters that were seniors in this ballgame. You can never undervalue what that means in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Miami is 21-3, and 12-0 in conference play. The first team not named Duke, not named North Carolina, to go 12-0 and in conference play since Virginia back in 1981, I believe. That's a telling stat, and they have four seniors. I saw a tweet before the game. It said Miami's average age is slightly younger than that of the Houston Rockets right now. And this is what Brad Brownell is going to have to deal with. Brownell is going to have to deal with bringing in guys that have to play four years and hoping that by the time you have a nice rotation through, the class through, get your seniors up there, when K.J. McDaniels, the sophomores or seniors, hopefully this program will be as good as it was back during the playing days of our next guest, Terrell McIntyre. I like the effort. I like the energy. I like the hustle. I didn't like the way things went down the stretch, the final couple of plays. Not my ideal shots at the end of the game for Rod Hall. But let's credit Jay Williams, the announcer, former Duke guard, for admitting that Carl Hess's Offensive foul call on Rod Hall was terrible. And it was great to hear him continually mention that fact, that that was not a charge, that it was a block. The defensive player slid in. I mean, those are key free throws. But you know what? Speaking of free throws, you got to look yourself in the mirror every once in a while. And if we're going to throw Milton Jennings under the bus for some missed free throws, if we're going to call Milton Jennings out, Devin Booker, Critical free throws missed in that ball game. K.J. McDaniels, critical, critical free throws missed in that ball game. You can't miss free throws and then expect to get a call down the stretch. You take it out of the officials' hands if you ring in those free ones. Maybe we need to call them valuable throws at Clemson because they are certainly not free. They are very expensive and costly for the Tigers. We'll be right back with Terrell McIntyre. Stay with us. All right, just a second here while I call uh, Terrell up during this break. And when we come back, you're not going to actually go anywhere, but you won't hear anything. It's going to be silent on your end. Uh, Just sit with us for a few minutes, and we'll have him with us momentarily.
Clemson Hotline rolling along here. I'm your host, Lawton Swan, and I did pick that music for a reason, because our next guest, Terrell McIntyre, is, I understand it, officially retired, so you can be a little bit lazy. You don't have to be as conditioned as you were, but Terrell, congratulations on a fantastic career at Clemson, plus over playing in Europe a couple of seasons in the uh, NBDL, but most importantly for Clemson Tiger fans, I know they... They really appreciate everything you did for, for them and uh, look forward to whatever you're going to be doing now that you're off the court retired officially. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I put uh, put a lot of work in on the court. You know, if, you know, if it wasn't, wasn't for Clemson, you know, none of the professional professional career would have happened. So, you know, I owe a lot to, to the university. Now, you and I are tied in a few more ways than some people realize. We both came into Clemson the same year. That freshman class was tremendous. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But if you're like me, was it about 32, 33 when you started to really feel it in the body? Because that's when playing on a regular basis for me, and I play nowhere near the level you do, but that's when I really started to feel it on a, a daily basis when I got out there. Uh, you feel it uh, early. I think it was in Europe. You practice twice a day, every day, so you kind of feel it at an earlier age. So around 30, I was starting to feel it, but I was still in, in great condition. And, you know, once I got going, I was going. But, you know, yeah, 30, 31 is, is, is normally the time where you start, you know, seeing, seeing the end very near, you know. Well, it seems like when you were at Clemson, most people referred to you as Boogie. Now, I want you to explain where that nickname came from, but it didn't seem to translate because everything that I saw coming out of Europe was T-Mac, T-Mac. But where did that nickname Boogie start? Uh, it started from uh, our strength coach, uh, Ty Wright. Um, he used to call me that because he said the way I move on the court was like I was dancing when I make my moves. So he was just <laughs> like I was boogieing up the court, up and down the court when I make moves you know, trying to shake people and, you know, give all kind of fakes. So uh, he, he, he started that, and it stuck while I was at Clemson, you know. And, and yeah, when I went overseas, everything was T-Mac. You know, they called me that at home and in Europe. So uh, it, it just stuck. But Boogie, but anybody from Clemson that see me now, they still call me Boogie. <laughs> now, when did, you, <laughs> when did you realize, I mean, for an undersized guy playing the game of basketball, when did you realize that you had a knack for the game and maybe you could play not only at the collegiate level but even make a nice run at playing in the NBA? Um, I knew I, I could play with – I felt like I could play with anybody because I had a, a guy by the name of uh, Elgin Blue who recently passed away as my mentor. He was uh, – I was in eighth grade, and he was the JV basketball coach for the high school. And if I would leave my eighth grade practice, my junior high game uh, practice, I stayed like walking distance from the high school. So I would walk to the high school. At first, I started out watching them practice, you know, watching the JV practice and the varsity practice. So eventually, he started letting me practice with the JV, and I was in the eighth grade. And, you know, these 10th graders, and, uh, you know, and I was, you know, one of the best players on the court, you know, and that's when I knew that I could play. I felt I could play with anybody because them guys was much older, and I was playing like I was at my junior high school. There were a couple of guys that grew up with me who, when they were younger, they were much taller, but they never seemed to grow after that, we all kind of passed them. Were you ever the biggest guy on the team, or were you always one of the uh, smaller guys? I was never the biggest guy on the team. <laughs> I've always been sure, you know. And, and when I grew, the guy, the other guys grew even bigger. So uh, I was always the smallest guy, you know, from from middle school all the way up to – the end of my professional career, I was always the smallest guy on the court. Well, you never let that stop you from playing hard, and I tell you what, you played with the biggest heart of anybody on the court, and I think that's what made you so great. This is the voice, of course, of Terrell McIntyre, former Clemson basketball player, number five uh, back during the best playing days uh, that I've seen at Clemson in a long, long time, maybe going back 20, 30 years, I think in the history of uh, Clemson basketball, that recruiting class that you had, those seven newcomers that came in, uh, in Rick Barnes' second year were so impressive. Can you name those seven guys still? Yeah, it was me, Tom Wyman, Patrick Garner, Tony Christie, Darian Jones, and Andres Jacunas. One more. Big O, Harold Jameson. Harold, my man, Harold, I can't forget him. I lived with him and played with him overseas, Harold Jameson. Well, that, that crew – 
you guys came in and single-handedly kind of changed the mindset in the Atlantic Coast Conference of what Clemson basketball would be. Do you still keep in touch with those guys? Uh, uh, Tony Christie I talked to. You know, I talked to Buckner. Uh, I actually seen him recently. We went out to dinner when he came to Charlotte. You know, he's an assistant with Houston. Um, and Harold, I haven't talked to him in a while, but, you know, uh, that's about it. Tom, I, I spoke to Tom, you know, uh, within the last year, you know, with the reunion and everything. And, men, and Tom was in Europe when I was there, and I visited. he came to visit me at my hotel when I played in his city. Uh, for a game, but uh, so you know the guys, we still we still communicate when we can. You know, the guys got families and in different parts of the country, so it's it's, it's kind of tough. But now with all the social media, it's it's, it's easier for us to kind of link back up. Right now, speaking of Tom Wadman, quick question: I don't recall you having a dunk during a game during your Clemson career. But Tom Wadman was 6'11". I only recall him having one. He never liked to dunk the ball. He always laid it in. Was that something that you guys told him? Did you ever say, hey, Tom, why don't you wreck the rim a couple of times like Harold? Yeah, always, always. Don't, you know, you, 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 you're, making use, you're not making use of, of all that good height you have. <laughs> you know, you're too tall not to dunk the ball. You know, if guys like me wish I could dunk every time I touch the ball. So, you know, we tease him all the time. But he, he was always, you know, Tom was the guy was, at the screen, he said two points is two points. No matter you lay it up or you dunk it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that was a, a mindset that I, w- I couldn't get with either because I'm like you. You know, anytime I had an opportunity to dunk, it was when there was nobody on the court. Here he is. Every time he's got some of the best post players in ACC history, like Tim Duncan, he's got a chance to put him on a poster, and he goes with the two-handed backboard tap. I never <laughs> tap the backboard doing the same thing I could do. Uh, the nineteen, uh, the ninety five, ninety six season. Your freshman year started out amazing. You start at eleven and zero. You climb in the polls. You travel up to North Carolina to play against UNC. We all know the history of clubs in North Carolina. You even played in one a few years later uh, at North Carolina, yeah. where only four guys finished on the court. And I think you might have scored nine points uh, in that little segment where there were only four guys out there. But you lose that game badly in your freshman year at North Carolina. But you made a statement to the ACC. Uh, about what to expect from you young guys. What was the mindset of your ball club going into that game and maybe even more so coming out of it as far as your expectations for where you could take this program? Uh, we was we was confident. You know, we was confident because we was we was freshmen. You know, when you're freshmen, you, and, and we had a bunch of great guys, so we was basically just listening to everything. Everything that came out of Coach Barnes' mouth, we, we literally believed. You know, he told us that we could be good. He told us that if we – put the work in and come to practice every day and, and treat every practice like it's a game. You know, he was always put in our mind that we work our practices. He wanted our practice to be so hard that the games would be easy. And it felt that way. We felt like we were going to be the best condition and the toughest team on the court. And once we start winning with anything, once you start getting a taste of winning, your confidence get get bigger and bigger. And then when you start beating teams, with the big name, so to speak, on the front of that jersey, it's in your confidence to go through the roof. And speaking of that, 1996-1997, the opening game against Kentucky out in Arizona, you guys take care of business. Now, fast forward through that season, you're against uh, Minnesota in that regional, an opportunity to play in the Elite Eight if you win that game. That game goes to double overtime. I know Tony Christie hit a finger roll to tie it there at the buzzer in, in regulation. Uh, you look back at that game, you know what you may have missed out on because you'd already beaten Kentucky. They would have been the team that followed after uh, perhaps UCLA. Minnesota oh, UCLA. has to yeah. yeah, Minnesota has to forfeit that game down the road for violations off the court. Uh, you know, you guys are, are sitting there now looking back at it. What could have been had things gone a little bit differently in that game? It was, you know, we felt, we talked about before that game, if we win this game, we knew we could beat Kentucky or UCLA. We felt that if, if, that, if we win that game, we're going to the Final Four. That's how we felt. And, you know, we we kind of did a premature celebration at the end of the – I mean, beginning of the, the second overtime. We hit two quick threes and got up six and stopped playing because we felt, oh, we up six, no way we're going to lose now. So we kind of – Instead of playing the game, we kind of started celebrating way too early. And, you know, the way Bobby Jackson and Kate – and Jacobson was playing, you know, they showed us that, you know, they was the more experienced and the better team. 
Man, that game was something else. Bobby Jackson had 36 in that one. A painful loss for Clemson Tiger fans everywhere. Terrell, can you stay on with us through the break? I've got, uh, I want to get to one more question and then run you through my quick Clemson 10 that I put all the former athletes through if you have time. Okay, okay, yeah, no problem here. Awesome. We'll uh, we'll keep Terrell on with us, folks. Don't go anywhere. If you have any questions for him, drop them off in the chat room. Terrell McIntyre, former Clemson Tiger basketball player, is with us here on the Clemson Hotline. Stay with us. Hey, Terrell. I used to sneak downtown with my fake ID and watch Doug McCormick rock TDs on a Friday night. This is a referral service. Calls will be routed to an independent referral insurance agency. Do you know the number one cause of bankruptcy? No, it's not losing your job or running up credit card debt. It's not even divorce. It's medical costs. If you and your family don't have health insurance, just one serious illness or accident could be financially devastating. But now there's good news, really good news. A health insurance hotline has been established to provide health insurance for all Americans, even uninsured Americans with pre-existing conditions. Now anyone can get health insurance even if you have a pre-existing medical condition. I repeat, now anyone can get health insurance coverage. Call now for a free no-obligation quote on affordable health plans available to you. Again, this is a free hotline for anyone, even if you have pre-existing conditions. Protect you and your family from sudden unexpected medical costs. Call the free health insurance hotline right now at 1-800-838-5562. That's 1-800-838-5562. Call 1-800-838-5562. There is something about looking and feeling classy that everyone enjoys. Check out Edisto Outdoors, an apparel brand inspired by our southern animals and environment. These shirts feature soft-touch prints. That will keep you looking your best in all types of weather. Look for Edisto Outdoors coming soon to many fine retailers across the state. Or visit www.edistooutdoors.com. Technical, comfortable, livable. At TurboTax, we know your paycheck is more than a number. It's brown bag lunches every day. It's picking up extra shifts. And it's catching the bus to work. You work hard to earn your money, and we want to help you stretch every dollar. That's why TurboTax lets you file your simple federal return for free. It's free to prepare, print, e-file, and you can even chat with a tax expert. TurboTax, the power to keep what's yours. Get the federal free edition at TurboTax.com. Live tax help service is subject to availability, restrictions, and change without notice. See TurboTax.com for details. Miss that old familiar ping of college baseball? Well, guess what? You don't have to miss a single game of Clemson Tiger baseball as you can stay at the closest hotel to Doug Kingsmore Stadium, the Clemson University Conference Center and Inn. Rooms are available for baseball season with lakeside accommodations, complimentary continental breakfast, bar, season's restaurant by the lake, Joe's Place Bar, and the Walker Golf Course. All are waiting for you right around the corner from the stadium. For reservations, contact General Manager Sharon Franks at Sharon f at clemson.edu or call toll free 1-888-654-9020 and ask to speak to Sharon. It's the Clemson University Conference Center and in go to www.clemsonuniversityin.com Wow, we have so much we have to do around the house. Awesome! A reason to go to the Tool Mega Sale at Sears this week. Fix the car. Up to 50% off all Craftsman Mechanics tool sets. Check. And the garage is a mess. Up to 50% off Craftsman Tool Storage. Booyah! And the faucet is... Honey, are you okay? I'm just so excited. Tackle your to-do list at the Tool Mega Sale. This week, only at Sears. Hundreds of Craftsman tools on sale in one place. Craftsman. Trust in your hands. Exclusion supply. See store for details. So you want to stop smoking. Well, here's what I want you to do. Go to a drugstore and take a stop smoking product off the shelf. Go to the cashier and tell them you don't want to pay for the product. You just want to try it first. And if and only if it works, will you then come back and pay for it? Well, if you did this, you probably would be arrested. But as silly as this sounds, this is exactly what the smoke-free try it before you buy it free offer is. Take down this phone number or store it in your cell phone, but call 1-800-426-6175. That's 1-800-426-6175. When you call, you will get the smoke-free complete all-natural 
Stop Smoking program. This program includes a 28-day supply of the smoke-free capsules, a Stop Smoking manual, a DVD and CD support program, and a bottle of weight loss capsules, just in case you are worried about gaining weight while you are trying to quit. Again, you will get to try all this free, a $130 value by simply paying a small shipping and handling fee. Call Smoke Free at 1-800-426-6175. That's 1-800-426-6175. This is a limited-time offer, so call 1-800-426-6175 today. Remember all the stories growing up as a kid About refrigerator Perry and just how hard he hit And my mama told me homecoming games are the best On the banks of those late fall late cars Well, I know how much all you Clemson Tiger fans here on the Clemson Hotline love to talk about Clemson football throughout the season, but this basketball season, and we've got Terrell McIntyre with us still. He stayed on the line, and we had a great conversation during the commercial break. And, Terrell, you were t- we were talking about that team, just how you guys really fit in with the community at, at, at Clemson, and uh, and you said it as much as I was thinking it with uh, the youth there. You guys just kind of came in and embraced being, it almost felt like a high school team really going after it. But your head coach was Rick Barnes. What did Rick Barnes do to sell you guys? How did he sell you guys on coming to Clemson, a team that had really underperformed uh, the few seasons before you even got there? Uh, he just, he just, his passion, his passion. And, you know, he, he just just told, told us what it was. You know, he was straight to the point. You know, he was uh, saying that the program was nowhere what he wanted it to be. And he just shared his vision of where he wanted the program to go, and he just wanted us to be a part of, you know, getting the program back to a to a high level. And you know, the guys that came really wanted to be a part of that, and and I did too. I wanted to be a part of building something and not joining something. Well, unfortunately for Barnes, unlike you guys and your teammates, he's not as revered by Clemson fans of just because of the way he left. Obviously in between your junior and senior seasons, is he still yeah. somebody you stay in contact with? And what were your feelings? Uh, not, not too often. Uh, I haven't talked to Coach Barnes in probably over a year. You know, uh, you know, I, I kind of lost contact with a lot of people when I went to Europe. You know, I was in Europe 10 months out of the year, every year, so for 11 years. So uh, it was it was tough uh, to really. So I haven't talked to him, but I, Coach Shad is another guy that I keep in touch with, you know, but the uh, – you know, we, we have no ill feelings towards Rick Barnes. You know, he was a guy that, you know, shared a lot of, to the game about us. We learned a lot from him. You know, we was disappointed that he left us, you know, especially the guys the, the guys he recruited to, to help get the program back to where it needed to be. And uh, But we was disappointed. But, you know, obviously we love Rick Barnes, and, you know, we he's doing what he's doing out there in Texas. Terrell, now we run you through the Clemson 10 real quick. Every great Clemson athlete that's come on the program has gone through it. I'll start you with number one. What does Clemson mean to Terrell McIntyre? Uh, family, home, you know, every time I go back, it's, it's, it's great. It's nothing but love from me and love given to me. Describe the first time you ran out from the tunnel at Little John Coliseum. Uh, Nervous. <laughs> I was nervous because, uh, uh, you know, just the atmosphere was, was great. And you want to do so well in front of your family, in front of, you know, and it, you know, this is the first time I played in a, a setting like this. You know, my high school was small and the gym was small, but then to run out in that tunnel with, you know, with 12,000 people was, you know, it, it, I was nervous the first time I did it. Who's had the biggest influence on Terrell McIntyre? My mentor, Elgin Blue, who just passed away, he's, right. uh, he, he's really guided me since eighth grade, you know, all the way up through my professional career. Snap your fingers. You're back on campus right now. Where's Terrell sitting? In my apartment with Big Harold and Darian Jones, and we are sitting watching an all-star game, laughing and joking. Your greatest Something crazy big O is doing. <laughs> your greatest <laughs> moment uh, during your Clemson career. My what? Your greatest moment. Uh, my greatest moment. Well, I uh, think it's more than one, you know. But um, Sweet Sixteen obviously was a big moment for us. Freshman year beating Carolina in the tournament. I'm gonna give you like three or four. Ooh, um, yeah, that was nice. Madison Square Garden, NIT was a big moment. And uh, 
thing you day. Spe- it was, it was huge for us. Speaking of that, NIT, I'm, I'm wearing an opening day with Rick Barnes shirt from way back when. I couldn't find my – you had you guys had one called The Last Garden Party. Had you and and uh, and Harold and uh, Tom and I think Tony Christie on it. I looked everywhere for it, but I, cu- I couldn't find that one for the show. Oh, yeah, I can't I, – I, I would love to see one. You know, my mom has, like – if she be pulling out stuff, I'd be like, <laughs> wow, some stuff I don't remember. Like, where do you get that from? So she she got a lot of memorabilia that I'm sure is somewhere. So I'm sure she got one somewhere. How about the toughest moment during your Clemson career? Uh, Probably was my junior year. You know, uh, we was supposed to be one of the top teams in the country. And, you know, I had a, a, a foot injury where I couldn't practice. You know, I only missed a three or four games if that, but I didn't practice for months and it was that was one of the roughest times for me. And you know, the team didn't have the kind of chemistry that we had the first two years and that was you know, that was tough. How about your most difficult class you ever took at Clemson? Most difficult class? Uh highly biology. You know, that's not that's not my thing. I'm a math guy. <laughs> <laughs> So biology, biology was uh, probably my toughest. Uh, best stadium to play in on the road, or best arena, I should say. The best arena? Oh, Cameron for sure, just for the atmosphere. One thing Clemson Tiger fans still don't know about Terrell McIntyre. Uh, that I could dunk when I was at Clemson. And finally, Terrell, you've been fantastic here. Number 10 on the Clemson 10 in 10 years. What do you hope Clemson fans still remember about Terrell McIntyre? That I I was a guy that, that won, uh, a shooter, and was just uh, excited to watch on the court. Awesome stuff, man. I'll tell you what, for the first time since you've been at Clemson, Jordan Roper, a left-handed freshman, we got a guy who can step out and shoot the three. Uh, before I get you out of here, yeah. what do you think about his play? Uh, he, he played well. He played well tonight. You know, it was a game that we gave away. You know, we played great defense all game, and the one possession we didn't play our best defense is the, the, what cost us the game. We gave up the late three to a wide-open shooter, which we hadn't done the whole game. But Jordan uh, Jordan really played played well, and he's, you know, he's something to look forward to in the future because uh, – we got a guy that can be a knockdown shooter from the guard position. And, you know, that's something we've been missing. You know, Andre could do it. But uh, this year, you know, hey, putting him in the lineup, he's, you know, knocking down the open jumper. And that's you You got to have a shooter, you know, at this level to stretch the pole. Terrell, the folks in the chat room want me to tell you that it makes Clemson fans proud to have a guy like you be a part of our program and, and you know, for everything you've done. So I appreciate your time, and I look forward to having you on again. Oh, yeah, I appreciate it, and thanks for having me at any time, any time. Awesome, folks. Terrell McIntyre, Clemson Tiger legend, number five on the court, but most of the time he was number one in your hearts because he was the guy who was dropping daggers on people, and, you know, he talks about that junior season. I know there had to be a disappointing moment there in the NCAA tournament getting knocked out in the first round when you really had a team that was loaded and poised for maybe another great run. But Terrell will join us again some other time, and I do thank him for his time. Man, I'll tell you what, those 24-minute segments and interviews fly by Clemson Tiger fans. I just hope that uh, we get to see some more play out of our Clemson Tigers like we saw out of those ball clubs that Terrell was a part of, a special group. Stay with us. Final segment of the show coming up after this. We'll be back with more Clemson Hotline right here on the John C. Calhoun Radio Network. Final segment of the Clemson Hotline here. Sunday night at 9, 
Wednesday night at 9 for TigerNet Talk. I hope we can get some more people here with us on Sunday nights as we do the show live. Unfortunately, I think because of, as I mentioned earlier, the NBA, Walking Dead. You know what, people? Get, get yourself a DVR. Go get you one of those Direct TV genies that can record up to five channels at once, whatever you need. Go ahead and get that so that, you know, you can participate with us here. Appreciate everybody who is with us, though. RCSportsCards.com. Again, notes, how can you not be proud of a Clemson program that graduates people like Terrell McIntyre? Well-spoken young men. All of them smart. Yes, I agree. And what's great about these guys is, and, and I want to tell you, if you know anything about our program, we've built a lot of these shows from the ground up, and these guys come in, they join us, they give us their time so that we can give back to you. And I hope that you appreciate it. Don't forget, Wednesday night, 9 p.m., Will Proctor, former Clemson quarterback, will join us. And we're still working on our upcoming guests for next week's Clemson Hotline. We're going to constantly uh, try to fill these shows up, especially those middle segments, with great former Clemson athletes, players who are making a difference, guys who are out there. And like I told Terrell during the break, hey, anytime you, you – know, if you've got a basketball clinic he's putting on, if he – you know, starts to head towards the coaching ranks. I, I want him to come back in and tell us about it. I want you to know about it so that you can send your kid somewhere to see or go to a camp with a guy that you know has uh, got Clemson roots, that played the game the right way, that did it the right way. And even though he didn't quite make it to the NBA level, uh, he did have an opportunity down in New Orleans for the New Orleans Hornets that came up a little short. Uh, but he ended up going back over to Europe, actually had his number retired over in Europe. Uh, a little bit of a different way to fill a professional career. But at 35 years old, Terrell McIntyre retires and uh, made Clemson Tiger fans very proud. And, you know, when you start looking at those jerseys that are hung up or those numbers that are retired in Clemson Tiger basketball history, I think you have to consider Terrell McIntyre as one of those. I mean, he, what he did as a freshman to come in average 12-plus points per game Carrying that up to, I believe, 17 points per game in his sophomore year. And that number dipped down to about 14 or 15 in his junior season. But when you're talking about a, a young man who uh, was undersized, undervalued out of high school, an offhanded guard that could create a shot, I mean, he was a, a key cog in the system that made Clemson run. I, you know, it wasn't towards national championships. It wasn't towards the Final Four. But back before Terrell McIntyre and Harold Jameson and those guys came in, the goal at Clemson was just to be 500 in conference play. Just to please, can we scratch out 500 or better? If we can do that, it's been a great season. It doesn't matter what happens or who we lose to or who we defeat. We just want to finish above 500. And they set a stage. They set a goal. And really, I think for many of the people who are in my age group now, we look at this Clemson Tiger basketball team. You see them well under 500. You know the Atlantic Coast Conference is down. And it disappoints. And it's, it's not as if the ACC is so good. I mean, Clemson is playing well under 500 right now and actually staying in the middle of the conference and has a chance, if they could pull off some victories, to get back to 500, but it's a subpar league. Terrell McIntyre's Clemson Tiger basketball team's we're going up against the Stephon Marbury's, the Tim Duncan's, the Antoine Jameson's of the world, the Vince Carter's. You know, Bobby Jackson at Minnesota had a great career in the NBA for the Sacramento Kings. I don't know who in the Atlantic Coast Conference right now is the best player in this league. Who's the next guy that's going to go to the NBA and be a superstar from the Atlantic Coast Conference? If anything, they're probably a freshman on somebody's ball club like at Duke or North Carolina. I mean, it, it, it's just the nature of the game and the way things have changed. Back then, guys, you know, Coach K, until Corey Maggette and Elton Brand came into Duke, they had never had a guy leave early to go pro. That's a staggering, that's a staggering thing, and that wasn't that long ago. I believe Maggette and those guys came in in like 97 or 98. Played a couple of seasons and were gone. 
Everybody else that I'm aware of at Duke played through their four years. And that's what Clemson has got to build on and hope for now. You'd love to get that elite player. Oh, I mean, for crying out loud, when you signed a McDonald's All-American in Milton Jennings, we all would have taken a guy who was two and done if he were putting up 35 points a game. I mean, we would take it. But you had to know that you're building for the future at Clemson so that you can compete against the Dukes. You can compete against the North Carolinas. It's been our argument here on the show for years. That's the way you get it done. And people are critical of Brad Brownell's recruiting. And as I told you before, I think it's too early to say that it's going to be bad because he's gotten some gems already. He's already picked up a couple of surprise guys who have made you stop and say, wow, that kid played K.J. McDaniels. You say, wow. And he's had wow moments throughout his career and almost had a wow put back to, to tie the ball game for Clemson Sunday. Jordan Roper, left-handed. You heard Terrell talk about him. He's gaining, he's gaining more and more confidence defensively. He's a scrappy guy. He gets after it. He anticipates defensively as well as any guard we've had at Clemson in a long time. He's had wow moments. Devin Coleman last season as a freshman, wow moments. So let's don't, let's don't judge Brad Brownell by the stars behind these players' names. And I think there's still some pieces out there that can be developed into some really good ball players on this team. I mean, if I'm – to be honest with you, I think Adonis Filer has a real opportunity. I mean, he's shown moments with ball control and skill that we, we haven't seen in quite a while. Maybe even going back to, I'll be honest with you, Terrell McIntyre. The way he controls the ball and can create lanes for himself. I mean, are there, do they need to grow up more? Yes, obviously. They're young. But I don't think it's the time to turn on Brad Brownell. The biggest problem that you have right now as, as a Clemson Tiger fan is free throws. Free throw percentage is awful. 23.5% from the free throw line. Now, I said on Tiger Net Talk Wednesday, and I don't have the time to do this. And if you're retired, maybe you hit the lottery and you've got the time. Please, go back through the annals. Maybe there's a website that'll do this. And say, if Clemson shot 70% from the line, how many games would they have won in their career? How much better would they have done? And I'm telling you, fundamentally speaking, at Clemson, it is the free throws that have caused the problems. It's not the players. It's not the coaches. It's the execution in between the ears and from that free throw line that is so key. And I don't know what you have to do to fix it, but if it were fixed, You'd have a win tonight over a top three team. Stay with us. If you depend on prescription opioid painkillers or heroin to get through each day, you may ask yourself, how did I get here? Withdrawal and rehab seem like scary and difficult roads, but there is a different way. I know because I was just like you and I found it at TurnToHelpNow.com. At TurnToHelpNow.com, I learned about different ways to get help including those in a private setting without the need for daily visits. Find your courage and go to turntohelpnow.com today. Blake Austin of South Carolina Farm Bureau is an insurance agent you can count on to meet all your needs. Home, auto, health, life, you name it, Blake's got you covered, and he can save you on your yearly rates. Call him now for a free quote, 803-259-5008. That's 803-259-5008. Or... Just go to ClemsonSportsTalk.com and click on the Farm Bureau logo to be connected to Blake. Do like I do and work with the best agent around, and you can tweet that. Want to hear the sound of hassle-free traveling? All aboard! Amtrak takes the hassle out of traveling to over 500 destinations. You can stretch out in a spacious seat, relax in a sleeping car, and enjoy a hot meal in the dining car. And for those who want to kick back and take in the scenery, go right ahead. For everything you get on Amtrak, the one thing you won't get is this. So whether you're going to a family reunion or an away game, make it a whole lot nicer on Amtrak. Book your trip today at Amtrak.com or call 1-800-USA-RAIL. All aboard! Mom, I had the best time 
best dream. <laughs> well, good morning to you, too. Okay, so I was a knight. I had a sword. And our house was a castle. There was this angry dragon. It was kind of scary. Oh, yeah? But I protected the castle. Oh, that's my brave little man. I'm glad our castle is safe. Your home is your castle, and sometimes you need help defending it. The National Association of Realtors supports maintaining homeowner tax incentives because they make home ownership more affordable for more families. Learn more at houselogic.com. This is a referral service. Calls will be routed to an independent referral insurance agency. Do you know the number one cause of bankruptcy? No, it's not losing your job or running up credit card debt. It's not even divorce. It's medical costs. If you and your family don't have health insurance, just one serious illness or accident could be financially devastating. But now there's good news, really good news. A health insurance hotline has been established to provide health insurance for all Americans, even uninsured Americans with pre-existing conditions. Now anyone can get health insurance even if you have a pre-existing medical condition. I repeat, now anyone can get health insurance coverage. Call now for a free no-obligation quote on affordable health plans available to you. Again, this is a free hotline for anyone, even if you have pre-existing conditions. Protect you and your family from sudden unexpected medical costs. Call the free health insurance hotline right now at 1-800-838-5562. That's 1-800-838-5562. Call 1-800-838-5562. back into the Clemson Hotline and yet the discussion in the chat room continues to be about muscle memory fundamentals not being taught at the AAU level. And I agree completely. I think that's part of the issue you have not only at college basketball at Clemson, but everywhere. High school basketball. You go see a high school basketball game this day and age. It looks like a track meet. And there's, there's, you know, the fundamentals of the game are gone and lost for a lot of these players and a lot of these teams. And it's sad. And then you get to college, you try to develop, but Ultimately, if you don't have that muscle memory and repetition down, if you don't have it right between your ears, you're in trouble at the free throw line, especially late. Clemson left a lot on the table, and the opportunity will be shot. And it's sad because that's a team in Clemson that could have used a little shot in the arm here uh, just you know, right near midseason, basically, and uh, really just a, a bit of a letdown, I think, for everybody who saw that game because you knew what could have been. Anyway, for the Clemson Tiger baseball team, Friday night against William & Mary, it was Shane Kennedy's two-run blast that gave Clemson the 2 nothing win in a game that was tight the entire time until late when Kennedy, uh, with one man on, just knocked the cover off the ball, really ripped one uh, to left center field. Uh, a real shot there uh, at Doug Kingsmore Stadium that gave the Tigers a 2-0 win. Clemson starting off the season 1-0 and everybody feeling better, but still a little concerned about the bats. Uh, in Saturday's game, it was an 11-2 loss. Patrick Andrews takes the loss. He pitched three innings, gave up five hits, four earned runs, and a disappointing opening season start for him. And Clemson still, the bats not awake at the plate. The frustrations on the message boards continue. What are we going to do? How, how are we going to survive this season when we're not getting any hits? So Sunday's game, Scott Firth, the pitcher, you can't lose this one. If you do, Tiger Nation is going to start off uh, feeling bad. Through through five innings, the Tigers tallied a total of one hit. People are going bananas. They can't believe what is what what is happening. Are we about to lose the series to William and Mary? But all of a sudden, the bats woke up in the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth inning. The Tigers scored three in the sixth, six in the seventh, and three in the eighth to win it 12 to two. And Clemson Tiger fans can wipe their brow. You got through the opening, the opening uh, series of the season, winning it two to one. Next Friday at four, Clemson takes on Wright State. Saturday at two p.m. and then Sunday at one p.m. So that's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday set for the Clemson Tigers against Wright State. Two and one doesn't do it for me against these teams. I mean, you know, if you tune in here to the program, you know I'm not the biggest baseball fan. I never have been. The last team I really pulled for hard in baseball was the Barnwell Building Supply, my T-ball team. It's the last time I really pulled hard for anybody. BBS is the best. You guys should know that. Put that in your, you know, work on that cheer and come back. Let me hear it next week. Anyway, next Friday, Saturday and Sunday, Clemson versus Wright State. 
Will the bats wake up for Clemson or will the Tiger faithful continue to question whether or not small ball in the dead bats can be overcome by this Clemson Tiger baseball team to put up enough points to score enough runs? Hey, it, it's kind of like basketball. It comes down to how many can you push across late. Clemson didn't do it in basketball. In baseball, Sunday they did, thus they win. But until next time, I'm your host, Lawton Swan, signing off. And as always, y'all take care now, and go Tigers!